Hello. Today I'm going to discuss the structure of nitrous oxide, N2O. Um, one aspect of this discussion is whether it's NNO or NON. Is it the symmetric or the non-symmetric structure? And I want to show how using Lewis structures and uh, a concept of formal charge, you can uh, uh, come out with the correct structure. Now, nitrogen has five valence electrons and oxygen has six, so there are a total of 16 in the molecule N2O. And a proper Lewis structure for second row atoms should have eight electrons around each atom. Bonding electrons between two atoms are assigned to both atoms. So let's take a look at the NNO possibilities. There are three. And you can see that each one of these has 16 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. They all have 16 electrons. And they all have an octet around each atom. So if we look at this nitrogen on the left, it's 2, 4. We count all the electrons, the bonding electrons. We, we assign them to this nitrogen and to this nitrogen. So 2, 4, 6, 8. This nitrogen has 2, 4, 6, 8. Oxygen has 8. And that's true for all six of these structures. Okay, so we have um, double bond, double bond, triple bond, single bond, single bond, triple bond. And basically, we have the same thing with the NON. So the question is, well, which one of these structures is the best? All right, we're, okay, now let's just, there's a th another structure that is not linear. It is bent that also has an octet uh, around each atom. Here you see nitrogen with two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen here, eight, and oxygen with eight. All right. So the concept of formal charge will be used to find the best structure, uh, whether it's um, NNO or NON or the cyclic structure. All right. So let's look at the concept of formal charge. The formal charge of an atom in a molecule or ion is the charge that the atom would have if all of its non-bonding electrons and half of its bonding electrons are assigned to it. Okay? And we will designate the number of valence electrons as VE, the number of non-bonding electrons as NBE, and the number of bonding electrons as BE. The formal charge is then the number of valence electrons, which would be six or five, depending on whether we have oxygen or nitrogen, minus the number of electrons assigned to it in the formal in this rule here, uh, the number of bond, non-bonding electrons, which are all assigned to the atom, and half of the bonding electrons. So if this formal charge is negative, if this number is greater than this number, it'll be a negative formal charge. The, the atom has more electrons assigned to it than the valence electron, so it has a negative formal charge. And if this number is less than this, it'll be a positive formula. And if they're the same, it'll be zero. The sum of the formal charges of the atoms in a molecule will equal the charge of that molecule or ion. Now, there's a principle of electroneutrality which um, helps you choose the best structure. There's two rules. Whenever you can write several Lewis structures for a molecule or ion, choose the Lewis structure with the lowest magnitude of formal charges. All right, so you want low formal charges. Secondly, when two proposed Lewis structures for a molecule have the same magnitude of formal charges, choose the one having a negative formal charge on the more electronegative atom. Now, oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, so if you do have formal charges, um, you would want one that gave oxygen a, a more negative formal charge than the nitrogen. So let's, let's take as an example um, HCN, carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen forming a molecule, hydrogen cyanide, and it could be HCN or HNC, and you can see we can write uh, proper Lewis structures of both types. And the question is, which one is better? Is it more likely to be HCN or HNC? Applying, applying the rules of formal charge to calculation, the three atoms, the first structure 
will have zero formal charges. Let's take a look at why that is. Hydrogen has, it has just two bonding electrons, so we assign one of those to the hydrogen, and it has one valence electron, so it's zero. Carbon has four valence electrons, and we assign half of the bonding, two, four, six, eight, half of eight is four, so it has zero, and nitrogen has five, we assign half of these, two, four, six, three, and all of the non-binding, four, five, so it's zero. So it's zero, zero, zero. Now, if we look at this one, the hydrogen would have a formal charge of zero. We take half of the bonding, which is one, one minus one. Nitrogen would have a formal charge of plus. It has one, two, three, four, so it's five minus four plus one. And carbon would have a formal charge of one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so it'd be six minus five plus one. Let's see, nitrogen should be five minus four. Oh, I'm sorry, a carbon would be uh, carbon has four valence electrons, so it's uh, four minus five, so it's minus one, plus one, minus one. So it has higher formal charges. And actually, <clears throat> nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, so this positive and negative is not very good. So we would say that the best structure is this one because it has the lowest formal charges, and it doesn't have formal charges that makes the more electronegative negative with respect to the less of that negative. So this is the preferred structure. This is the one that actually exists uh, in nature. All right, so let's take a look at the same concept with uh, the nitric ox uh, nitrous oxide. So let's look at the symmetric structures first. All right, I think you can, you can see that the formal charges are as listed below each atom. Remember, it's the number of valence electrons minus the number of electrons assigned to it, where you assign half of the bonding and all of the non-bonding. All right, so I think you can verify that these are correct. And they all have large formal charges. And one thing that's really disturbing is that the oxygen in the middle always has a positive formal charge, even though it's more electronegative. So we could say that the symmetric structure is not a very favorable structure in terms of the rules of electroneutrality. There's high formal charges and the oxygen is positive with respect to the nitrogen. Now let's look at the NNO and we have three structures that we can draw and uh, this one has a negative on the nitrogen, positive and zero. This one has zero, positive and negative. You want not oxygen to be more negative than nitrogen or zero the same, you know, all zeros. So this one at least has the more electronegative atom oxygen having a negative formal charge. And this one has the oxygen having a positive formal charge. So this would look like the best structure right there. Okay, now let's take a look at the um, cyclic one. Um, I think you can see that uh, for the oxygen, it's 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 4, 5, 6, 0, all right? Six electrons assigned to the oxygen in the formal charge way, and six valence electrons. For the, each nitrogen, it's 2, 4, 6, so we take half of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. So they all have zero formal charges, which is good. The problem, however, is that it, this has a lot of strain. The, the bond angles of the equilateral isosceles equilateral triangle uh, would be 60 degrees, and there'd be a lot of strain. Ideally, the angle between the NO and bond should be 109.5, which is the tetrahedral angle. The angle be between the N and O should be 120. That's the cyclic, cyclic structure would be considered have considerable strain. Well, let's look at uh, 
This is the structure that we predict it to be the best one. It predicts that the molecule is linear. It predicts that the, the oxygen is negative with respect to the nitrogen. So the dipole moment would be from positive to negative. And uh, we predict that the nitrogen-nitrogen bond would be shorter than the nitrogen-oxygen bond. And if you look at the literature in, the, in this report, you see that the NN bond is shorter than the NO bond, and that the angle between the and oh, the NNO angle is 180. So it agrees with uh, what's found uh, for nitrous oxide. So I hope this uh, helps you understand the concept of formal charge and the principle of electron neutrality, octet rule, and those kinds of things. Very useful. And often it works. Usually it works. So thank you for attention, your attention, and I'll see you next time.